Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to continue taking a look at custom libraries and how to make your own custom library. There was a part one to this, so you should definitely see the part one before watching this video. All right, let's go and take a look at the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And that's here. And where we found all of this stuff about custom libraries is under the code section and under tools, there's custom library. So that will uh, link to here where you can grab the zip file. And we're looking through the zip file right now. Uh, we have already looked at the ES5 version of the template, and that's the bulk of what's happening. And now we're going to take a look at the ES6 version, but we've already gone over how all the ES5, um, or how the library worked in general, so it shouldn't take us too long to explore the ES6 version of that. And then we also want to take a look at ZimV and ZimOct, how we implement those two things for our dynamic parameters in Zim and for styling on the canvas. So that's what we're doing today. All right, let's close that one down. Badoop. Here is the ES6 HTML page, and there's a, an ES6 library page as well. So um, we've already looked at the ES5 and the ES5 library. There's also the two full libraries that we want to look at. These are all generally doing the same thing. And what that is doing is it's giving us a house. So I'm going to open this up in Browser Plus. And there's a house that comes in and falls over. And then a message, an event, appears too bad. And it loads that again and does that uh, like so. All right. So we're calling the ES6JS library. All of this stuff to be able to do that, to make our house to change a property of the house, to mm, say that we're going to make it fall after two seconds, and to find out once it's finished falling to pop up this pane. All of that stuff is exactly the same between ES6 and ES5. The only difference is we're calling the ES6 library here, and when we refresh the page, we're calling the ES6 page here, as opposed to our ES5 where we're calling the ES5 page. Everything else is the same. We're going to change it up a little bit when it comes to looking at the full template, because in the full template, we're going to, well, I don't want to say full template because we have a Zim full template in the uh, full example or sample of a library. We change it up a little bit because we're going to be applying style, and we also want to check out the dynamic parameters. But um, the HTML for ES5 and ES6 basic ones are the same, or is the same. So what is different though is the library itself. So here's the library, and the library is pretty well the same too. Basically the, the docs are going to be the same. Boop, 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 boop. The ES5 module pattern we've kept because we we described why we we're doing that in the, in the last video. Uh, basically it's so that we can bring in all of these classes in our module without having to worry about bringing them in individually named or using the Zim namespace. Uh, you'd be fine on your on your custom modules if you wanted to use the import. That's, that's okay. Uh, go ahead and do that import export with ES6. Uh, then you'll just have to make sure that you either import exactly the things that you want without the namespace, or use the namespace. Uh, however, we've left it the ES5 module pattern, and it's just that bit there, and just this bit here, so it's pretty easy to, and you would be the way you would apply it. Uh, the ES5 module pattern is just bring it in with a script tag after you've loaded your Zim. So there's Zim, bring it in with a script tag, no problem. So coming back up, uh, the docs are the same then, the ES5 module pattern is the same, and here's where we differ then. We're making a class that extends a Zim container. We're storing that on the ES5 module just as we did before, zim.house, 
And remember, we're making that global or available global by going house equals zim dot house there if we uh, don't need the, don't want the namespace. Okay. An ES6 class has a constructor, and it's the constructor that receives the parameters, not up here. We can also use the default parameters, like so. But you're going to see when it comes to using uh, Zim with style, with Zim, Zim Oct, we can't use the default parameters like this because we have to read the style before we decide on what we're making default. So uh, it's handy here if we're not using style, but whatever. And then we're calling the super class. So we need to call the super class before we can start using this. There's nothing down underneath the class here. So here's the end of the class. So we don't extend the way we did in the ES5. So just a little comparison here to ES5. With ES5, the class is just a function like that, where the parameters are right in the function, stored on Zim. And then we extend at the bottom right here by saying the house extends a container. We have some a few other things that we might want to detail, but in general, uh, we don't really even have to use those. And then we could have just used up here, super. So this is how we would call the super constructor super if we didn't give it a specific ID. This dot super and we're passing the width and the height. <laughs> I don't want to go too far. Come back one. Okay. I think we're good. And where are we going to the ES6 here? So in ES6 we have a class extends a zim container. Nothing about overriding it. We actually did run into a problem when we overrode the, um, or tried to use clone, I believe it was, either clone or dispose. I think it was clone. Um, so we'll mention that as we go on. But in general, it should, should work out uh, like that. And then here's the constructor. And inside, we call the super. Um, for Duo to work, we then need to activate the SIG. So for Duo to work with uh, ES6, we provide this SIG that matches, that's one thing I wanted to do, right, that matches the same as um, what we're passing in here, size, bottom, color, and top color. Size, bottom, color, and top color. Usually, um, for Zim, when we when we built Zim, it was quite straightforward because we would we would come in here. I hope you don't mind me bouncing back too much in between these two versions. But to do the SIG parameter, we just here's here's the parameters that were passed in. We just go like that, copy, and stick them into a string, paste. And so uh, if you're minifying this code, you would need to do the SIG like that. So it's very easy to do the SIG, you just copy these and stick them there. And we pass them in to the Zim Duo. If you're not minifying, then you don't need to do that step. Boop, like so. And you can just pass in null for the SIG. But for ES6, we do have to pass that in just for the ES6 class to be called properly and work. All right, and there's the SIG. So this is handling the Zim Duo so that we can pass in parameters in a regular manner or as a configuration object. Very handy. The container, because we had to call the super before we could use this right here, we don't even know what size to make the container yet. So it's a little awkward. It's like, darn. We don't know how big to make the container yet. Um, so we make the container with no dimensions. And then here we figure out a width and height like we had done before. And then we set the bounds of the container. So this dot set bounds is a way that we can set the bounds uh, after we know what those bounds should be. <laughs> Yay. Whereas in the ES5, we were able to uh, call the constructor after we receive some of these default parameters and stuff. 
and that allows us to just write on that constructor, set the width and the height. We're setting the type of house. We do that the same way here. This dot type is house. We can store this into that if we want. In ES6, there's usually less reason to do that, or they will probably get away without needing that exactly, <laughs> without literally needing that. Uh, but we've done it, and this stuff's the same as before. Clone is sitting inside here. So in ES6, we're inside the constructor right now. I thought that I was going to have trouble with ES6 classes because of lack of private properties. So if you set a property in here, like a var in here, you cannot use that var outside when you met, make these methods. So here's the fall method right here. This is outside the constructor. That's the end of the constructor right there. So here's the fall method in ES6. And we have no access to the stuff that is inside of here unless we store the stuff inside of here on this, like this dot bottom, this dot top. That will allow us to access that down here if we need it. So I thought I was going to have a problem. Then I realized, oh, well, we don't actually have to put the methods down here if we don't want to. We can just continue to put the methods right up here in the constructor stored on this. And then it works just the same way as ES5 classes that are all sitting inside the function. Unless in ES5 you're using methods that are on the prototype, uh, which we don't throughout Zim. We rarely, I think there's a couple times that we have to do that, but we rarely are putting function or methods on the prototype in ES5. So most of the time we are putting them right here. Uh, well, back in ES5, we're putting them right here inside of the, the function, as opposed to afterwards on a prototype, like down here after the function in a prototype. So I'm not sure what you're used to doing. Anyway, back in ES6, we do have that option to just put the method right in here. Uh, traditionally, they're suggesting we put it outside here. It's probably the equivalent to putting it on the prototype. We found that when we put clone outside, it actually didn't work. It um, didn't. This clone did not seem to override the clone of the container, and it was doing the clone of the container, which was very confusing, because the clone of the container will just go through and clone everything that's in the container, and it bypassed the uh, making of a new house. So when we clone something, we don't really want to clone everything in it. What we're doing is actually remaking the class using the things that are in it. Uh, and we want certain flexibility in here as we do clone it. And, and so anyway, it was odd that when we put the clone down outside, it didn't work properly. So I moved it up here. I'm not really sure why uh, that didn't work properly. Very strange. But the fall method can go down in here. So here's the fall method. And when you do it, it's a nice format. You just put the name of it. You don't have to put function in front of it or anything. You just say fall. We receive the parameters. And you got the squiggly brackets. So inside here is the same as it was in the ES5. Here's the dispose method. And that seemed to work fine. We can call the super class, super.dispose. So you would remove any events inside of here that you need and then call the super class for dispose. Uh, just be aware that the super class has um, the super class is a is a a container and the container has its own dispose and you're gonna the containers dispose disposes the things inside the container but if we're already running a dispose it can be circular so this is handling uh, that um, uh, basically uh, yeah it's it's handling that so just follow the format. Um, okay, or you can see if you can get away with disposing by just not doing any of that. If you don't have any events, you, you can just delete this dispose and, and use the basic dispose. But if you do have events in your class here that you need to dispose those events, then do it this way. We talked a bit about that in the last video. Hey, getter setters, aren't those nice? get the bottom color, set the bottom color. So that's a lovely format in ES6 compared to the format in ES5 here, which looks like this. 
not that much of a difference, but you know, who wants to do that used to scare me. I, I've done this so many times now, it doesn't scare me anymore. I still, I don't, I don't pay any attention to it. I just go and find it. I never code it myself. I go and find it, copy it, and then adjust that word and put the things that we want in there. <laughs> But you see, the things that we want in there, just the same, basically, as the things that we want right in here. Uh, all they've done is provided a nicer interface into that. Get bottom color, set bottom color, which is right here. This is the get of bottom color. This is the set of bottom color. So this is probably like almost double the code. Uh, for structurally anyway, you know, with a nice simple one like that. Uh, if you had lots of stuff in here, then it, would, it wouldn't really do double the code, but for a nice simple one, it's almost double the code to do this. And if you have a lot of them, that starts to add up. It's not really any more work though, if you think about it, but it, and it minifies pretty well the same way, especially if you would babel it. Uh, so anyway, still that's nicer to look at, get and set in ES6. It's also nicer that uh, to look at as well that you know the class structure I think in general is pretty clean we've got that stuff going on uh, I've already gone over that a number of times so why don't we just leave it but there's ES6 yay okay and now let's move to the full version of this uh, looks like I was doing some changes so hopefully I didn't mess up anything as I was looking through there uh, here's the full, and it doesn't really matter which one we... Well, it matters a little bit which one we look at, so we'll look at the ES5 one first in the full. Um, here what we're doing is we're setting style. We're saying, hey, the house is going to be styled to have a size, any house, any house that we make. And we might have multiple houses. This is very logical to use this if we're building a city with a bunch of houses, um, we might want to say, hey, they're all going to be styled 200 rather than putting 200 on each house that we build. We don't have to do it that way. We could just say this, style equals size 200. If we do, we're going to apply a style of 200 to anything that has a size parameter, which this uh, font inside of here, inside of this thing does have a size. So, <laughs> <laughs> if we just left that turned on, it would be kind of ridiculous. So we would have to make sure that once we build the houses, that we would then turn that off by saying style equals squiggly brackets. That's the fastest way. There's also this one, style.clear, I think. Okay, on the, the class directly. But that's the one I usually use, just clear the style. However, if we say specifically that we're styling the house, then no need, we don't worry about the size of this font being adjusted because it's only the house that's going to get this style. Uh, the other thing that we're doing here that's different is when we make the house, we're setting the top color. We're using Zim Duo here and going directly to the top color parameter and we're passing in red, orange, or purple. So that means every time we make this refresh, we're gonna see a different color uh, roof. That top color was red. We refresh, that top color is red. We refresh, <laughs> that top color is red, how embarrassing. We refresh, <laughs> okay, what's going on? Uh, right, we're looking at the wrong one. This is the ES6 library, it's always red. So we want to open up this full one right here and open in browser plus. There we go. Uh, it's still red in this case. Oh, no, the size is bigger. That should have given me a tip. Uh, the size is 200. Uh, we did get a red roof and yet another red roof, such as the life of random numbers. Bloody hell, do we have another red roof? <laughs> and refresh a purple roof. Okay, fine, finally, purple roof and an orange roof. Okay, so indeed, every time we run that, it's getting a different color. We could have done that by just ran, rolling a random, uh, you know, putting the array, picking randomly from it. The easiest way to do that 
is shuffle. Well, I mean, actually, the zip v values are the easiest way to do it, but shuffle that array and then get zero. So we could say uh, let color, well, it'll probably be const anyway. Okay, and then we would pass the color in there. So you could do that, and that's fine. This is this is this example, but imagine that you wanted to tile a hundred houses and have them all be random colors. You couldn't specify a color to start and then tile the house at that color because it would be yeah randomly they'd all be red or possibly randomly they'd all be orange, but they'd all be that. So, um, however, if you were to do this and pass this house right here into the tile then Zim knows to pick randomly each time it makes a tile. Amazing. Actually, it's a little trickier than that because we're cloning. And so when we clone 100 houses, we have to make sure that the clone knows to pick randomly from those colors and not be a clone that is exact. But what if we wanted a clone that was exact? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um... We are just demonstrating in this case. Wow, how did I do that? That's fancy. We're just demonstrating that we can pass in ZIMV values. And we're going to see how we receive those ZIMV values and actually apply uh, ZIMPIC, the random num the random. Oh, it doesn't have to be random. This could also be a series, a series or the results of a function or a min max in this case uh, top color has a no min it's not got a min max but if we did the size here zim v is also things like the min of 20 and a max of 50 and if we didn't set uh, oh actually setting the size here will override the style size so right now it's it's big if i refresh here i haven't saved it i don't think um Oh, yeah, I still haven't saved it. Okay, right. So we've got a big house there. But now I'm going to save this. Save and refresh here. Now we've got a little house. Oh, too bad. A medium house. <laughs> and, and literally, well, we're in between. Maybe let's make it um, 150 there. And then I think it'll be a little bit easier to see. Okay, different size house. Too bad. Uh, kind of like about medium, smaller, really small. Oh, puny falling house, bigger. I don't know where 250 is. I thought it would be a little bit bigger than that, but maybe, oh, it's 150. That's why. Okay. 350. There, you're going to get a bigger range. Big house. Next time. Medium house. This is more fun to look at, huh? Medium house. Come on, give me a puny house. Come on, you can do it. Oh, big house. All right, here. Probably had enough of this. So that's us passing in um, different sizes. And again, if we tiled this house, we would see a tile of a whole bunch of different size houses as well as different rooftop houses. Uh, by the way, we can style it this way as well. So we could copy that and stick that in the style. So that is very cool. Ooh, I wonder, there's one more thing about the style that will make this work. And I think in the example, I forgot to include that in the style. So this might not work at the moment. That's a good thing I thought of it. Yeah, there's a second step. We're going to see how we apply the style. I did the first step of the style, but I think I forgot to add the last step of the, st um, of the style Oh, no, of the Zim, which part is it? Style? Yeah, part, last step of the style. Anyway, because it probably won't work now. That's big. I could be wrong. Medium. It is work. Oh, did I save? Yeah, it is working. Um, it is possible that second step that I was talking about is just for something like when we either clone it or when we um, uh, extend it or something like that. I can't remember for sure, but it does seem to be working at the moment. Yeah, just passing that in. Okay, well, we'll take a look at that a little later. So that's what we're doing there. And let's bring that back, though, to, uh, I don't know, what did we have before? Was it 300 size house? 
good enough. And those are the differences. Using style and applying the Zim uh, V value there. Otherwise, all this stuff is the same. Yes, it is indeed. And we're good to look into the class here. So the docs are a little bit different in that the docs say now that it supports Zim V, which are these pick formats of uh, an array for randomly, uh, a range like that, and a series, and the function that returns a result. Those are Zim V values. And then oct as parameter defaults can be set with style, okay, like CSS. That stuff, oh, uh, it's not quite the same. We've added three different parameters there. You can also uh, do kind of like a CSS class, but we call it group so that we don't get it confused with JavaScript classes. So there's some parameters that we've added there. The methods are the same. Note that this method does not accept a Zim V value. This is for dynamic parameters. We could have set it up to do so, but uh, we didn't, and it doesn't accept Zim Duo either. We could have. Uh, it's only got one one parameter, so that would be pretty silly to do Zim Duo on it. Generally, we don't do that. Uh, we did it as Zim Duo on three parameters. So House has three parameters just to demonstrate. Even uh, probably we wouldn't. We might. We might. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, we don't do Zim Duo on all classes. Is uh, yeah, but. If there's only two parameters, it's sort of silly to do Zim Duo as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, there we go. So the properties have changed a little bit in that these two properties accept Zim V, and that's usually how we mark that. So in other words, you could set the bottom color to an array, and it would pick from that array randomly. Okay, so some changes in the docs. <laughs> There's a minor change here in that we're receiving three extra parameters in the clone as well. When we do the clone, there's a change in the clone. Where is the clone? There it is. And that when we clone, we would pass in those three extra parameters there as well on the end. We're also doing this thing for handling exact, and we'll come to that, but let's uh, pop on up and see the earlier stuff first. So for style to work, this is what's operating on style. Just copy this line right here. This word needs to be the name of the class. And quite often, it can work out that we just pass in this dot type into that. But sometimes we need to collect the parameters first before we can run the constructor. And it's important to run this dot type after the constructor. Because otherwise, this dot type will end up being the container and we want it to be house. So if we put this before it, when we run this constructor, the constructor would say, oh no, I'm a container. And it would overwrite the house. So we have to make sure that that comes after. And yet we need the width and the height for this. Therefore, we want to grab the size and the size might come from a style. So when we copy this line, this is supposed to say what the name of the class is, house. And what that will do is it will then say, oh, house. <laughs> I know that I should look for something called house to see what, what um, styles are getting applied to me. Okay, so we've got it saying house. We pass in this dot group. Don't worry about it. Uh, as group comes in, uh, we've set this dot group. So the, these two things go hand in hand. Just copy all that line and collect the inherit. Don't worry about a thing. Okay, so that and these guys, just add those. Don't worry about it. What we can do now is um, the parameters change a little bit. If no size has been provided, then we're going to set size if there's a size in the style. So this stands for style. OK, 
can't remember what the D actually signifies. <laughs> oh well, doesn't matter. It's what we've used. The style. <laughs> there we go. So if a size is stored on this style, then we can use it. Because we haven't provided a style. If we haven't provided a style, use it from... Uh, or sorry, if we haven't provided a size, use it from the style. But, it, well, actually, this is saying if it's not equal to null, then use it from the style. Otherwise, the default is 100. So previously on this, previously, when we brought in a parameter, we said, A, if we haven't passed in a size, set the default to 100. Now, what we say is, if we haven't passed in a size, then set the size to, if we passed in a style, set the size to the style, otherwise set it to 100. So it just adds a little bit to each one of these things. And we've done it with the color as well, bottom color and top color. So it's really easy to apply once you, once you get used to it. Uh, when I build a custom class, I build it all without style. And when I move, I, I build that custom class outside of Zim, just in an app. I just like, hey, okay, I'm gonna build class. I, I take it and I move it into Zim. And when I move it into Zim, I copy one of these things from before and I just go through and I adjust all the parameters to do this little trick right here. Okay, that's the style. And as mentioned, there's supposed to be something at the very bottom here that we have to add to for a style. Let's go see what that is. Why not? Huh? Uh, what am I looking for? I'm in the code. I want the CDN dupe and zim NFT, and we're starting in on 0, 01 now. I'll just go back and look at 00, zero and docs. Okay. Uh, we can go to control F, uh, zim.circle equals. So here's the, the zim circle, and I'm going to scroll on down to the end of the zim circle. Here it is right here. If style is not equal to false, then Zim style transforms. Ah, that's what it is. Okay, so there's a second part. We can style not only the parameters, but we can style other things like its various transforms, like the alpha or the rotation or a bunch of other things, the, the position of it, the move, et cetera. We can style that. And for that to get styled, we need to add this thing right here. So. We copy this line, it comes just before we clone. Note uh, extends is okay, we don't need to worry about that other thing. Um, and that was it. And that comes just before clone, right there. Global function would have put on display object if I had access to it. Uh, okay, uh, you don't need that probably. That was just a note for me inside Zoom, or a note for us. All right, so if style is not equal to false, uh, so if some f style has been passed in, then we're going to style the transforms. Okay, I'll have to update the zip file with that, and I'll have to update the ES6 library with that too. Getter setters probably just right in here will do. Okay, that looks good. Alrighty, and that will allow us to do things like uh, the house, comma. We could even center the house. Uh, oh, uh, not like that. Center, colon, true. So it's slightly different, but center, colon, true. And then we don't even have to center here, I believe. Let's see if it works. Didn't seem to... Oh, ES5 library, save, center. And there it is centered. Okay, so um, I didn't save that and it didn't center, nothing showed up. 
but now that I saved it, it when I go to center it, it worked. And there's other things that we can do there too. You can read all about that under style. That would probably be a good thing for you to do is go look at the docs under style and see all of the things that are available for style. If you haven't looked at style, it's very powerful and there's a lot available for you there. By the way, that was built in, I don't know, a couple days, I think. We built CSS in Zim in just a couple days. Mull that over. <laughs> you know. Wow. So it works a little bit differently than CSS, but you can find other, other videos about style, okay, where we explain uh, how that all works. Um, generally, just quickly, you apply a style, and that will last until you take the style off. All right, but if you apply the style here, it doesn't style anything made before it. So you basically turn styles on, make some stuff, turn styles off or change the styles or remember the styles. So there's various things you can do there, but it works a little bit differently than um, CSS styles. However, the concept is the same and it's quite similar in how it looks within, within here. Uh, because it's just configuration objects, basically. And those have been around in programming long before CSS was around. So CSS came from programming, not the other way around. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, or the format of CSS, I should say. CSS actually came from magazine and print before programming was around. <laughs> But the format of it is just an object literal. It was around for a long time in programming before the CSS format came. All right, what were we looking at? Ba, 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 ba. Center true, we don't need to do that anymore. Oh yeah, and we want to bring that back. Oh note, because they are object literals there, it's a comma, not a semicolon. Okay, so that's something to get used to. Other than that, pretty similar, and we don't put units in here. So, back to the ES5 library. We have seen... We've seen the style stuff. So, styles here, here, and down here at the bottom. Boop, boop, boop. Right there. That's basically you copy and paste that in. Next is how do we handle Zim pick? So the Zim V values. Um, if we're not worried about how it clones, then we wouldn't have to do any of this stuff right here. So we have a message that this relates to cloning. But basically what we do is we say, okay, we've got size, but now we have to pick something from that size. So if size is just a number, like 100, it'll just pass through and size will be 100. But if size is a, an array, then it will choose. So we're calling the Zim pick class directly. So this is a static class, like the math class. And we're choosing, uh, using the choose method um, from whatever we passed in there. So if it's an array, it will pick from, if it's a min and max, then it will pick from in between there. If it's a function, it will take the result of the function and assign it to here. Uh, what, what's the other one? If it's a series. If it's a series, for instance, if we're tiling something and we want it a series, we could tile it to make it get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, we can bounce that and make it go bigger and bigger and smaller. So series has a bunch of methods that you can tack onto the series to, to change up how the series works as well. So I would highly recommend you take a look at Zim pick and Zim series in the docs to understand the full power of that. All right, so there we are setting the size, the bottom color and the top color. That's all it is. So that's how we pick inside here. This bit is saying uh, what we're doing is we're remembering because as soon as we pick from that size, we, we no longer have access to what it size was originally. So what we wanted to do was make a system that we didn't have to. We've got a lot of parameters quite often. We didn't want uh, to make a line for each parameter to remember what the original one was. 
That would have sort of doubled the parameter lines. So we made this little handy thing right here that um, remembers uh, we just take we, we copy and paste the parameters we just whatever parameters we got there uh, which would be just these ones don't worry about those ones um, whatever parameters we're wanting to remember and we throw them in here and this takes the arguments passes it in so OA becomes the original arguments in a sense and you're going to see that so that's original arguments so we're going to see that down under the clone then here's the clone if it's exact and uh, the original arguments is a pick val or is not a pick value so if it's exact and the or the original sorry if it's exact or the original arguments is not a pick value then we just use whatever the size is otherwise we use the original the first of the original arguments here so if it's exact, exact, by the way, is a parameter here. If we want to clone it exactly, then we want to just use the exact size, not the zimpick value. And if it's not a zimpick value, then we want to use the exact size. But if it is a zimpick value, then we can just use the um, original argument here. And when we clone it, it will run the pick again and maybe choose something else. Okay, so that's why we did this. Sometimes when we clone, we want it exact, and sometimes we don't. And this format right here, although it looks a little bit unruly, isn't really that hard to apply. You would just copy that and change exact. And, oh, sorry, not change exact. Same, change bottom color or whatever value you're throwing in there. And top color is it in this case. And then we're also passing the style on through. It may be that the group gets changed. Style probably won't. Inherit won't. Uh, read about the style to find out what Inherit's doing. But anyway, um, these probably won't get changed. But that dot group, it is possible that you might decide as, as you built this to change the group that it, it uh, comes. And when you clone it, you want the new group. I don't know, maybe. So we just made that available for you to adjust there. All right, that was it. Um, I wouldn't say it's, you know, it was simple exactly, but it's not too much. You got to run this for the clone. Pick V1. And then in the clone, we, we did that a little adjust on this stuff right in here to add this line for each of the parameters that we want to either clone exactly or not exactly. If, if we... If we don't care about that, then we can just leave it how it was here in our clone. Size, bottom color, top color. Size. Sort of hidden in there. Size. Bottom color hidden in that one. Top color hidden in this one. Okay. And your class will work with style, and your class will work with Zim V pick values. Woohoo! You may see if you look inside of Zim, sometimes we uh, we didn't solidify Zim pick. And we didn't make it a class of its own. We ran instead this thing called Zik. So uh, there's Zik. Zik is the little short one that means pick, basically. That's the Zim version of pick. So all throughout Zim, it may be that we use Zik like that. But when we realized how powerful the dynamic parameters was, we wanted to make that available for others. So we created a pick class and the format to do it that is Zim independent, and that's available on GitHub. So you can apply dynamic parameters in some other library that is not Zim. And when we did that, we said, well, okay, we can't be using Zik there. So we made officially a pick class and um, made a choose method on that pick class to handle what Zik did. 
if you've used Zim before, then you know about our short little chain, our short little uh, methods there, like zog for console.log. We even apply some Zim to basic HTML stuff, like zid, zid is a way that you can get an ID of any um, HTML tag uh, without going document, docket element by ID, um, zss, and zago. And so there's a bunch of those there in the, they're in the, um, wrap it's called a wrap module of zim it's down there at the end of the the docs and speaking of wraps that's a wrap all right that's pretty amazing yay oh it's not quite a wrap darn uh we've got this this one right here almost a wrap the full version of es6 i don't think it's any different it's a little bit different let's go check so here's es6 and we've got our constructor. We've added the style, the group, and inherit. But note, we are not applying the default parameters in there like we did in the ES6 module um, where we didn't do styles. So here's the ES6 where we didn't do styles. We apply the default values right in there in the ES6. Where we do do styles, we can't do that. We still call the super. We've still got our sig, we've got our duo, we've got our types, here's our group. Oh, in this case, look, we've got a type of house, we've got a group, and we are just passing in the type there. Why were we able to do it here? Where's the constructor being called? Yeah, because the constructor has to be called right at the beginning. So that's gonna say, the container's gonna say, I'm a container! But then this says, now my type is actually a house after the constructor. Um, so we gain an advantage in that we can specify house only once and use this dot type inside of here as we get the style. Then we get the sizes and uh, then we have to reset the bounds at some point. Here we are doing the pick. Ah, the pick would come after we get the size or sorry, the bounds would have to come after we get the size makes sense right because we're randomly picking or we're picking from something to get that size uh, and we want to set the bounds based on that size so all that's the same and the clone exact and, and the clone is the same too as before oh and the style being added there all right let's see if that works still so here's the es6 html uh, i'm going to close this one down and that's good. The last video, my for some reason, my code over here was disappearing every time I closed that. It's not disappearing now. I don't know. Don't ask me. Open a browser plus. So there's the ES6 coming in and the house is falling and where you should get random colors at the top, but we've had two purples. There's an orange, okay. And if we wanted to test this, locally with the ES6 version. There's the size. What else did we do there? We want, oh yeah, well, let's randomize that size. Oh no, that wasn't it. That will probably work. We wanted to do like a dot, um, uh, we could locate it, loc colon x colon 100 and y colon 100. So that would be how to locate it and add it at those locations. Uh, but oh, if we want to keep it simple, we'll just center colon true. You can also do a center reg colon true and that centers it. You could scale it in here if you wanted to and various other things. And we won't even bother centering it here. So it is really cool. Um, we've done uh, the one style example in the docs, one of the style examples anyway, the main one. We basically say new button, new button, new button, new uh, dial, new dial, new label, and that's it. And everything is done up in styles. What we want, where we want to add it, what's inside it, etc., etc., etc. Neat, huh? And it's just so the the it just becomes new button, new button, new button is our content, and everything's done up in style. So we'll save this and see if it still runs. Yeah, it still shows up centered. So that's good. That means that second thing that we added in the ES6, I hadn't tested that. Second thing that we added in the ES6 is working. Uh, we can test this, refresh, not there. Took it away. <laughs> the timeout still goes. <laughs> I 
there's our timeout is still arriving right here, the timeout after two. Um, but we don't see it because we didn't add it. So bring that back. And there it is being added. And the house is falling. The house has fallen and we're done. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a long series of doing our own custom template, but that's really nice that you've been here with us to figure that out. I hope that that will help you make your own uh, custom libraries with Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been a Zim Explore. Come on in and join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to see what you're making, and you're welcome to ask any questions there. Have a great day or night. Cheers. <laughs>